Okay, we're now live. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Right. Um, so good morning, um, everybody, to um, members, officers, and um, any members of the public who are viewing the live stream of this meeting. So this is the meeting of South Cambridgeshire District Council's Cabinet. And my name is Councillor Bridget Smith, and I'm the leader of South Cambridgeshire District Council, and I'm the chair of the Cabinet. Uh, so we have um, all members of our Cabinet present today, um, including Councillor John Batchelor, who's just recently joined and is leading on housing for us. Um, I won't introduce them all. They all have their names attached to their uh, their pictures, so uh, you can work out who they are. Um, and we have an, we have um, quite a number of senior officers with us as well. Uh, so I'll just go on to see who else is present. Um, do we have Councillor Grenville Chamberlain present, please, who is the chair of our Scrutiny and Overview Committee? Right. Do we have a representative from Scrutiny and Overview, please? No, I'll take that. Uh, Chair, it's Councillor Richard Blunt. I'm a member of Scrutiny and Overview. I'm not here officially as a representative, but oh, okay. I'm a member of the committee. Um, and indeed, uh, Councillor uh, Leader, I'm here as well, Councillor Anna Bradnam, uh, as a member of Scrutiny and Overview, but not expecting to speak today. No, OK, that, that's fine. Well, thank you. For, thank you very much to uh, both of um, you for introducing yourselves similarly, as well. Um, similarly, Leader, I'm here, Councillor Claire Daunton. I'm a member of the Scrutiny and Overview Committee, but okay, not thank expecting you. to speak to it. Thank you very much. Yes, um, um, I, we haven't got a report from them, which is probably why we haven't got the chair or the vice chair present at this meeting. Um, do, uh, so do we have any other members of the council present who'd like to introduce themselves? Apart from the ones who've already yes, done please. so. Yes, please, Chair, if I may. Please. Yeah, Councillor Henry Batchelor, just here to uh, observe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I've just seen Councillor Heather Williams's name pop up. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, Heather Williams, and I represent the Mordens Ward. Thank you very much indeed. So I'm just going to get up the name so I can actually ask people. But somebody, right, next person, please. Well, I see if I can get the names up. Nobody, nobody else. Okay. I think that's everybody. That's everyone. Jolly good. All right. Well, thank you very much and much indeed. OK, so um, I, just, I have one announcement I would like to make. Uh, following a motion at a recent council meeting, I am uh, just announcing that Councillor Toomey Hawkins, who is currently our lead member for planning, will continue to do so, is going to take on the re additional responsibility for equalities as part of her cabinet role. So thank you very much for agreeing to do that, Councillor Hawkins, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you regularly on the subject. Uh, so moving on to any apologies of absence. Uh, Jonathan, have we received any apologies, please? Good morning, Leader. We have received no apologies of absence from cabinet members, but we have received apologies of absence from Councillor Judith Ripeth, the Vice Chair of the Scrutiny and Overview Committee. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much indeed. Um, so moving on to declarations of interest. So do any members have interest to declare in relation to any item of business on this agenda? Uh, if an interest subsequent, subsequently becomes apparent later in the meeting, just raise it at that point, please. Yeah, morning uh, leaders, this is Councillor McDonald. So I declare an interest as uh, a member of the board of the investment partnership. Um, and accordingly, so I'll leave the meeting when we come to item nine. Thank you very much. And if we could have that noted in the minutes, please. Um, any other declarations of interest? Nope. OK, so moving on to uh, minutes of the previous meeting, uh, which start at page one. And I'll just go through them quickly, page by page. If uh, oh, Councillor Toomey Hawkins, sorry, did you have a declaration of an interest or a matter for the minutes? Uh, I'm sorry, Chair, not um, not a declaration, but I think um, there was a belated um, Apology from Councillor Chamberlain that um, Councillor Williams Heather wanted to tell you about. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Williams. Uh, thank you, Leader. I just put in the chat that um, Councillor Grenville Chamberlain asked me to pass his apologies on. Um, he's not able to attend today. 
That's fine. I, it's not. It wasn't. It's not like him not to submit apologies. So I'm not. Uh, I'm sorry we no, missed those. He's unexpected. That's fine. He's he's a stickler for these things. Okay, do right. I've got the chat up now. So uh, yes, yeah, so if people would indicate if the uh, cabinet members can uh, wave at me, but if other anyone else uh, can put it in the uh, chat that they wish to speak, please. Uh, so um, any uh, anything in relation to page one. Page two, page three, page four, page five, page six, page seven, page eight, page nine, and page ten. Okay, that's fine. Thank you very much indeed. Um, so, do members approve the minutes? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Anyone wish to vote against the proposal to approve the minutes? Anybody wish to abstain? Yes, I wish to abstain as I wasn't present. Thank you very much, Councillor Bachelor. That will be noted. So Cabinet therefore agrees the approval of the minutes as a correct record by affirmation. And uh, moving on to item five, do we ha have, we, um, I believe we've received no public questions ahead of this meeting. OK, good. So items, item six, um, which I shall introduce. Uh, so this relates to the Oxcam arc, uh, which has uh, now produced a set of um, arc environment principles, which are setting high, high standards for the environment, for everything that goes on uh, within the arc. And I've been fortunate enough to, uh, to chair uh, an arc uh, Arc Environment Working Group, uh, which has consisted of um, considerable numbers of uh, experts, both from government, government officers such as DEFRA, Natural England, the Environment Agency, a lot of uh, NGOs, including the RSPB, who've played a very, very significant role in this, um, but also the, uh, the universities, the nine universities who are represented across the ARC, and also the LEPs and Anglia Water and so on. So a set of principles have been, uh, been put together and have been published, and they've now been accepted by the ARC plenary, which is the body uh, which represents all the local authorities and the LEPs across the ARC, and which there is representation on from all the council leaders, uh, apart from those for, for Buckinghamshire. So they have, they have accepted these. They have accepted that they are highly ambitious. They set really high targets and they're not going to be easy. Um, but if the arc is to be the truly a green arc, uh, which is what the leadership wants it to be and which government is supporting, and these, these um, environment principles have landed very well with government, we're led to believe, which is very encouraging. Um, you know, they need, they need to be ambitious. There's no point in doing things um, by, by half measures, really. So the next stage for these principles is for them to go to all the uh, authorities throughout the ARC and for them to be accepted by each of those, those authorities. Uh, they are now being worked up by the ARC itself into an environment uh, strategy, which again will come back to us and hopefully will then fit in very comfortably with all our own policies and our own and our own local plans and they will include things like doubling nature which is an ambition that we already have but there's also going to be a big focus on water um, very much in reference to the uh, the challenges we have here of water shortages this end but actually challenges of water management in terms of flooding else elsewhere in the arc but particularly if the arc is going to result in lots more house building you know there has to be there has to be better use of water, but there has to be better management of the the wet wet natural environment as well, so that we don't see tragedies such as talk streams running dry. Um, and these aren't problems, as we know, that we can sort out on our small local level. They can only be sorted out on a regional level. Regional level. So the fact that we are part of this this larger um, spatial plan gives us opportunities to do some quite radical things to improve our own environment, but to make sure that all development, um, including things like East West Rail that happens within the arc, are built to the highest environmental standards. Um, 
So we are asked to, um, let me just get this right. Are we asked, yeah, we're asked to endorse the shared environment principles, uh, which appear in your paper at Annex 1, and to B, support the development of an ARC environment strategy, which will provide uh, for how the principles can be delivered. So I'm proposing this, and I believe Councillor Aidan van der Weyer is going to second it. And uh, Councillor van der Weyer, do you want to speak to this item, please? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll say what word, word for now, just very briefly. Um, uh, this is a really excellent document, and um, so the contents is great in the way you set out. Um, I think the real significance of it is is uh, is the um, impact it's going to have. Uh, it has um, uh, come out of the of the arc, so it's come from the all the councils and the leaders involved in the arc, uh, and that gives it a lot of weight with with, with government, um, who's obviously uh, leading on the on the policy um, on the arc, in particular the, the spatial framework, um, uh, but also will give it a lot of weight with. Um, Local authorities when when um, considering um, uh, planning policies in particular. Uh, so I, I think it, it, the the yes the the, the approach and the, the way that it, it sits in the in the development of the arc I think is going to be uh, extremely effective. So uh, it's really exciting. Thank you. Thank thank you very much. Yes, I'm very I'm very excited by this, and I I must uh, must thank. Um, our chief executive Liz Watts, who has put considerable effort into this, as well as the uh, the lead officer on the working group, and uh, she's steered a very steady but quite speedy ship, actually. Uh, so, are there any questions for any cabinet members on this item? No. And any questions from any other members of the council? Righty ho. Uh, good. So that's. Uh, I'll take that as. Um, Enthusiasm. People share my enthusiasm for this. Uh, so um, I, the recommendations have been moved. So do members agree with the proposal as previously stated? Agree. 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 Thank you. Anyone wish to vote against the proposal? And anyone wish to abstain? Thank you very much. So cabinet therefore agrees the proposals by affirmation. Right, so moving on to item seven, um, which, so we've got now come to the point on our agenda where we need to consider whether to exclude the press and public from the meeting. And this is because the next items contain information which is commercially sensitive. Members of the public are advised that if cabinet agrees to exclude the press and public, the video stream will end. I therefore propose that the press and public be excluded from the meeting during consideration of the following items of business in accordance with section 100A brackets 4 of the Local Government Act 1972 on the grounds that if present there would be a disclosure to them of exempt information as defined in paragraph 3 of part 1 of schedule 12A of the Act brackets as amended. Is that seconded? Councillor van der Weyer, do you want, I think you're second, seconding this aren't you? Uh, absolutely, yes, indeed. Thank you very much. Uh, do members agree with the proposal? Agreed. 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 Thank you. Anyone, Agreed. Wish, anyone wish to vote against? And anyone wish to abstain? OK, so have, Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation. Uh, members of the public who are watching, this means that the video stream will now end. We thank you for joining us uh, to view today's Cabinet meeting, albeit a very short one. And I note that the next meeting of Cabinet is scheduled to take place on Monday, the 24th of May 2021 at 10 a.m. And we look forward to uh, seeing you then. Uh, so, Liam, could you please confirm when the live stream has stopped?